Fujifilm recipes are an awesome reason to shoot with a Fujifilm camera. They're a ton of fun, but they can be complicated to figure out which ones work best for you. Today I'm going to give you five Fujifilm recipes that I've tested and enjoyed myself, walk you through when they work best and which situations to use them in, and give photo examples along the way. Now, before we get started, I do want to say, I didn't create these recipes. These are recipes I've found online through sources like FujiX Weekly and many other websites. I'm going to link all those places I find my recipes below so you can check them out, as well as the recipes I talk about in this video. I also do want to mention, this is going to be the eighth episode in the series. There's seven other videos just like this in a playlist, so check that out for more recipe ideas. With that, let's get into it. Kodachrome Classic. Kodachrome Classic is another take on the very popular Kodachrome film stock. Not only is this one of my favorite Kodachrome recipes, it's one of my favorite recipes I've used, period. The recipe uses auto white balance with a slight warm shift. This makes it very versatile, but best suited for use outside on days with a bit more sun. The DR200 setting means you may see highlights clip a bit more, but personally, I think this really helps sell the classic look that this recipe is after. If you're looking for a recipe that's versatile and great for travel, this is the one for you. Bright Summer. Bright Summer is the perfect recipe for, as the name implies, summer. It's a very stylized recipe with desaturated blues and lots of warmth do the really warm white balance this recipe uses. This recipe is also super low contrast. I find myself adding a touch more contrast to the JPEGs in post, but if low contrast is your style, you'll feel right at home. Now I do want to note, this recipe takes time to really understand and learn how to shoot with. It wasn't until my third attempt at using this recipe that it really clicked, but when it does click, it can be a ton of fun to use. Neon Obscura. Like every video in this series, I try to include a recipe that's good for moody overcast days and night scenes, and Neon Obscura is perfect for this. With both red and blue white balance settings in the negatives, this recipe has a muted green look that really helps give a cinematic vibe. When shooting this recipe in slightly brighter days, you'll notice bright whites and darker shadows making it interesting for a high contrast look. While not the most versatile recipe, when in the right condition, this recipe does a really good job. Royal Gold the idea behind this recipe is to create a feel of memory through color, and I think it nails this look. I find the recipe can work really well in multiple lighting situations. Despite the warmer color temp, I actually really liked how this recipe handled an overcast day, giving a really unique blue color. When it's a bit sunnier, the recipe also does a great job letting the blue tone sit back for a warmer look. The grain settings this recipe uses gives the photos taken with it a grittier feel. Between those grain settings and the color this recipe produces, Royal Gold definitely makes you feel like you're looking back into a memory. Noir Bloom. Like every video in the series, I try to include a black and white recipe. This recipe can be a bit tricky to shoot with, and I find it works best when you have strong highlights in the background of your image. Like the name implies, this recipe works really well when you have a diffusion filter to bloom those highlights. I shot with a 10% Cine Bloom, but I think a stronger strength diffusion filter could have an even better look. Depending on how you expose your photos taken with this recipe, you can either get really contrasty silhouettes or at even midtones and highlights with blacks that are a bit shallower feeling. This is one of the more unique black and white recipes I've used, so give it a shot and let me know what you think. Out of the five recipes I mentioned in this video, I'd love to know which you're most interested in trying, so let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for more recipe ideas, so if you have a recipe you think I should try out, also let me know below. For now, make sure you check out the other videos in this series. There's a lot of them with a lot of great recipes. Go out and take some photos. Thanks for watching.